O God, like you went forth before your people, marching with them and living among them. The earth trembled, heavens poured down rain out of wheel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends in Christ, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate Christ's sacred mysteries. You were sent with the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made your people partakers in your redemption, Grant we pray that we may perpetually render thanks for the resurrection of the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Attila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. He went to visit them and because he practiced the same trade, stayed with them and worked for they were tent makers by trade. Every Sabbath, he entered into discussions in the synagogue, attempting to convince both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul began to occupy himself totally with preaching the word, testifying to the Jews that the Christ was Jesus. When they opposed him and reviled him, he shook out his garment and said to them, Your blood be on your hands. I am clear of responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. So he left there and went to a house belonging to a man named Titus, Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next to a synagogue. Crispus, the synagogue official, came to believe in the Lord along with his entire household. And many of the Corinthians who heard believe and were baptized. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known in the sight of the nations. He has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord, the Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord all your lands. Break into song, sing prayers. The Lord has revealed to the nations his sacred power. The Lord be with you and with and your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Holy Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, A little while and you will no longer see me. And again, a little 
while later and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What does this mean that he is saying to us? A little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father, so they said, What is this little while of which he speaks? We do not know what he means. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Are you discussing with one another what I said? A little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me. Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices and you will grieve, but your grief will become joy. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We always notice that uh, in the past, that uh, during this month, most schools hold their graduation or commencement exercises. And during this time also, we have the graduation masses, the baccalaureate masses. For we know that uh, graduation is one of the most awaited moments in the life of students course to their parents also and to their teachers. But because of this COVID-19 pandemic, most uh, graduations are uh, canceled or probably will be celebrated uh, in the later date. And last Saturday, I was able to watch the uh, tribute for the graduates of 2020 in the TV. And it's very uh, uh, warm uh, appreciation for those graduates this year. For we know that uh, graduation is a uh, milestone of every student. For we believe that graduation is an occasion for recognition of one's success and also a completion of one's work towards a great mission in life. My dear friends, today's Gospel reading speaks about the eminent departure and the completion of the mission of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is in this context that Jesus is saying goodbye. It is a way of telling his disciples of this moment of separation from them. When Jesus tells them, a little while and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while later, and you will see me, and you will grieve, but your grief will become joy. And the, the disciples could not understand what these words of Jesus. But practically, Jesus is telling them that he will see them again in a little while, he's saying goodbye, and also making a promise that they will see each other again. Because we know that Jesus would come back to the Father, and coming back to the Father, He will also send the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, to fulfill all the promise, and through the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, they will understand everything that Jesus revealed to them. So Jesus tells His disciples two important truths. The first one is, he must leave them to return to his father. And the second truth is, he will surely come again at the end of time to usher in the new age of God's kingdom. And we know that uh, Jesus is telling them that, of course, separation and absence entails sorrow. It entails grief. But Jesus consoles them in his word that he will come again. And you will grieve, but your grief will just a little while. And your grief will become joy. 
So Christ does not say that their grave will be replaced by joy. But what Christ is telling them that their grief will become joy. So it means joy will not come by repressing sorrow or sadness, but by allowing it to be transformed into a new experience of joy. So, in other words, in every separation, there is always sadness, there is always grief. In any absence, there is always sadness. And I know people are asking, Father, when can we go to the church and have a celebrate the community mass? And I know there is sadness that you cannot come together. But in any sadness, Jesus is telling them that we have to transform that experience into joy. And that is what telling his disciples that Grief and sorrow, sadness, are indispensable in our life. But we have to accept it and transform it into joy. So whatever we experience right now, the sadness and sorrow, are just temporary. But once we accept it and transform it into joy, it will become a change in our heart and a new meaning of experience in our life. So my dear friends, let us try to turn God and let God quench our thirst while listening and understanding the word of God. And let the sacraments, especially the Holy Spirit, even though you cannot participate physically, but I know you are always there. Your desire to be with God, to be united with God is always there. Because we know that God will not abandon us. God is always in our means. The only thing is we open our hearts to let God and also let go so that God could let in in our hearts. Amen. Keeping our eyes fixed on the promise of salvation, we bring our petitions to our merciful Father. Our response to every prayer, Lord, hear our prayer. For all bishops, priests, and deacons, may God continue to sanctify and purify them in their sacred mystery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those in positions of political power, may the grace of God enable them to truly see the needs of those whom they serve. Let us pray to them. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are struggling in their faith, may God look graciously upon them and the Holy Spirit help them grow in truth and let their sorrow become joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those people we promise to pray for and for our community of faith, through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, may we faithfully live the truth of the gospel in all our actions and interactions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and those who suffer, that they see and feel God's loving presence and receive the healing grace of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have us from diners in battling the COVID-19 pandemic, that they will be given always the courage and strength, as well as guidance and protection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have passed away, in the hope of the resurrection, especially for the poor souls who need our prayers. May they be welcomed into the victory of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intention of this Mass, for all the members of Perpetual Mass Society, and all the people listed in our prayer list, and those people we promise to pray for, and prayers that we hold in our hearts. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, full of goodness and love, look with mercy upon your people for their shortcomings. Sustain them in their trials and let your love come upon them. And let them transform their grief and sadness into joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and bread of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the community of Christ, we come to the result to share it by the Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Your goodness to have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spring of bread. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise of the Lord is made, for our good and good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrifice and offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to obtain you, O Lord. But it is time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For in the old order destroyed, the universe cast down is renewed. And the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with past and joy, every man, every people exalts in your prayers, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the identity of your glory as they have named. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of God. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the Father of all holiness. May holy therefore this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the true fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Glorious Martyrs, and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be quarters to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. And the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, peace I give you. My peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you to all of you and online. May this meaning of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us for this city. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you. I unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty, our living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of the saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. May you have a blessed day. Thank you, Father. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty and loving God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended, Lord, in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.